You've probably heard of domesticated animals. So you're thinking, you know, cats, dogs, maybe farm animals. Sure, cows are domesticated. But have you ever heard of an animal domesticating another living creature? It does happen. For instance, some ants have domesticated fungi, termites, things like that. And now we have a paper all about a damselfish that not only tends a farm of algae that it uses for food, but it keeps a colony of mice and shrimp on the farm for the nutrients that they give back to the algae in their waste. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Man, and this time around we're talking about a paper just published in Nature Communications. It's titled The Domestication Via the Commensal Pathway in a Fish Invertebrate Mutualism. There's a link down below in the description. The paper is open access, so I'd really recommend you checking it out if you're interested in it. It's quite interesting to read and really a, an approachable paper. The authors are specifically looking at a Caribbean species of damselfish. That's the longfin damsels, Tagastes dinocaeus. And this damselfish aggressively defends a little patch of algae that it grows, and it uses that for food, essentially its own little farm. Not all farms have mice and shrimp, but most of them do. And when those shrimp are present, the damsel defends the shrimp against predators, just like it defends its algae. Now, you might be wondering, wouldn't the damselfish just eat the mice and shrimp? Yes, normally those damsels would eat small shrimp like those mice that swarm all over their farm. But when those mice and shrimp are on their farm, the damsels did not eat them, except for on some very rare occasions. So what about that paper title? It's kind of a mouthful, right? What is a commensal pathway to domestication anyway? Well, it turns out that there's actually a few different ways that something can become domesticated. There's three, in fact. Three. <laughs> and they're usually not mutually exclusive. Sometimes both happen. First, you've got the prey pathway. That's how things like our cows have become domesticated. It's easy to raise them on a farm for their milk and meat, so we did it. And over time, poof, we have the modern cow. Second, there is a directed pathway where we would kind of mold a wild animal into something like a horse, breeding out unwanted traits over time and making them more and more suited for something that we want. Over time, the animal becomes more and more suited for that role that we have in mind and less like its wild counterpart. Both of those pathways just don't happen in nature. You don't find wolves tending flocks of sheep to ensure they have a steady food source. And you don't find chimpanzees corralling herds of wild horses to use them for transport through the forest, except for, of course, in movies. Both the prey and directed pathways are unique to humans, at least as far as we know. But the third pathway, the commensal pathway, that's something that we do see in some animals and insects. The commensal pathway to domestication is what's given us the family cat and our dogs. Originally, wild cats just hung out with us. They fed on mice and rats that were attracted to our food. Over time, they got used to having us around and they didn't mind, or we didn't mind them being there because they were eating the rats and stuff. Eventually, we figured out that, hey, that cat's fluffy. And we figured out that the cat might actually tolerate us being around and petting them. And the family cat became a thing. Similarly with dogs, less aggressive wolves figured out that if they went along on our hunting trips and helped us, around uh, the villages, we might reward them and give them some food. Over time, the wolves became less and less wild, less aggressive, and more helpful doing things for us, and the dog became a thing. The same thing is happening with these damselfish and their mice and shrimp living on their little algae farms in the Caribbean Sea. The mice are attracted to the scent of the long fin damselfish, and they return to that same fish over time. And the damselfish that had mice on their farms were actually healthier than those that didn't because the mice swarms produce waste, which serves as fertilizer that makes the algae the damsel eats more healthy. The mice shrimp even react to cues given by their resident damselfish and ignore other fish, even other damselfish. The farms with mice had a lot more octrophyta algae. Those are just brown, fleshy algae that helped grow more turf algae, which is actually the algae that the fish are eating. Those brown algae only grow in areas with higher nutrient levels, so the mice and shrimp are actually serving a purpose on those damselfish farms. In return, the damselfish provide a significant amount of protection to the mice against predators that would otherwise eat them. I have never heard of fish maintaining farms of algae on their own to provide food for them, let alone keeping a colony of mice on their farm 
as an all natural organic fertilizer source. That's really cool research. And I really appreciate that the paper is open source so we can all share it. So that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. I will catch you all next time. Take a moment to subscribe if you haven't already. Be kind to each other. Stay safe. Bye.